Hello, everyone, and welcome to 3D Vision Technologies 10-4 Tech Talk, a monthly introduction to engineering technology that can make your company better, faster, and smarter. I'm Todd Majewski, your host for today. Today's topic is what is SolidWorks PDM standard, an included product to SolidWorks professional or premium. Our guest speaker, Larry Moore, application support engineer and certified SolidWorks expert for 3D Vision. Good morning, Larry. Hey, Todd, how are you doing? I'm doing great. It's good to see you here. So, Larry, before we get started, I want to tell our listeners a little bit about your background. So, you're a degreed industrial designer from Univers University of Cincinnati's DAP program yep. and has over 18 years' experience working with SolidWorks and Autodesk products. You're currently supporting many of our customers right now on tech support, so you really understand and know some of the issues our customers are going through, don't you? Yeah, and this is a great product that we need to be talking about, and every one of our customers needs it. Great. Well, let's get started, and let's see if we can start talking, just jump right into this, and show our customers what we're going to be talking about. Yeah, today's presentation is going to be SolidWorks PDM standard, the new standard in data management, and it really is. So we're going to be covering a lot of things about PDM standard today, and this is really meant for a brief overview. So we're going to say, you know, who is PDM standard for? What is PDM standard? What's going on with the work group? What are the benefits to it? And why would you even need it or want it? And there, we're going to go over some brief system requirements, and we're also going to give a, you know, a two or three minute demo of what it actually looks like. And so who is PDM standard for? You know, we get this a lot. PDM standard is really for those small customers that are using premium or professional because it comes in that product. They don't have to buy anything. They already get it. Okay. You know, it's well, looking. Well, wait a minute. What if I'm using SolidWorks standard? Is there a way for me to get to? Yeah, you could. You can purchase that, I believe, right? Yeah. Or you could upgrade to professional. You, you, you could. You could upgrade to professional and you get it in the product. It's going to design groups that spend time for looking for more data. It's if you store your data on a network drive. I had a call the other day, Todd, and it was just so depressing because this guy spent a long time um, working on this file. He had it in an assembly, and he got that little dialog box that says you need to contact technical support because we can't open your file. Oh, and no. he said he won the he won the corrupt file lottery, and it's not a good lottery to be that, That's not never fun. And the bad part about it was is he was using software professional, and he has access to this right now. But he's just not using it. He's not using it. Okay. And it's for the small work group uh, implementation. So PDM standard is really a, a simple, scalable data management solution for the small companies. Um, it's included with premium professional. We keep saying that because people don't quite understand that yet. And it's a Windows interface. We don't have to learn anything new. And we'll show you that at the end of today's presentation. It's a database structure that's running on SQL Express. There is nothing else to download. We keep getting this to customers calling for support and going, where do I download my PDM standard from? It's on that download. It's on that disk that we shipped you out. It's in that download underneath your, your customer portal's download. It's also an easier upgrade because there is no migration if you do say that you want to go to professional, PDM oh. professional. Okay. Um, so do you think we're going to, are we going to talk about what's in PDM professional somewhere down there? Yeah, I'll show you that a little bit later. So with... With Workgroup PDM, it will still be available in a product in the 2017 release of SOLIDWORKS. When 2018 is released, SOLIDWORKS 2018, you will not have access to Workgroup anymore. Now, that doesn't mean that your current product is going to go away. You can still use it if you would like. Okay. okay? So we're kind of giving you about two years' notice on this to prepare and get ready for it. And the reason we're doing this is, is because it, we are PDM standard is an easier upgrade to professional than it is in work group. Okay. And we're going to give you a link that is going to allow you to download a, um, a blog that Jeff Sweeney, my counterpart here at 3D Vision, that wrote about how to get your, dot, your data out of work group. And it also has very similar functionality to work group so that you'll be able to see what's going on, and we'll show you that a little bit later. So the benefits to the customer, right? That's yeah, the this is this the big one. I want to make sure... If we're going to, if we're making our customers who have work group, the 14% of the clients that were said yes to that, work group or PDM standard better be better, right? It is. Okay. It, it really is. Because you get robust data management capabilities. The file searching inside of here is second to none. And it's the exact same file searching that is in professional. So searching on files, you know, metadata is what the data management 
products call it. But metadata is really all that information that is used, the file properties that you put on something. So say you design a part one time and it is uh, 1020. You, did, you, you do some simulation, you do something on it, you find out you need to change it to a different material. That information is in there. You want to find out everything that is in a specific state, anything that is released. You know, I want to see this. Anything that comes from Alan Bradley, you'll be able to search on there. You're also going to be, where is this part contained? Where is it used? So it's not just in the current assembly you're in. It's going to search the entire database, and if it's used in 15 different assemblies, it's going to tell you that, and you're going to be able to get that. So, Larry, if I've been using SolidWorks and I don't use data management, which many of these client our listeners are, and I bring all my five, ten years of SolidWorks data into PDM standard. Is it now going to be able to tell me where it's being used and all the other information that I would need? It will. It will actually do that. And that's why it's a low learning curve and a low cost of entry. And us at 3D Vision, we provide some great training for PDM standard as well as professional, and we can help you with that because it, it is something that so what's that I'm seeing on the screen, that little workflow? Yeah, so this is great because this is the workflow that's included, which you can modify this out of the box with PDM standard. So say I'm working on a part, and I want you to approve it because you're my boss. you gotta, you know, you got to sign off on everything that we do. So I'm going to put it in the approval workflow process. I'm checking in. I submit it for approval. You're going to look at it, and you're going to tell me whether I need to change it or that manufacturing is going to be able to see it. And this is one of those other things, because a lot of times companies find that they are manufacturing the wrong component. But the other benefits to this are, is you actually get database security, unlike Workgroup. Because Workgroup is based off of a text file, right? Right, so you're saying we got a database versus a text file, which databases always work better. It, exactly, which is going to, you have to have a little bit more on the system requirement side to run this. But you get that database security. You get a common UI with Windows Explorer. You get versioning and revision control. But the other benefits are the design reuse. Because what happens a lot is customers will go, well, I need to design a new machine. I don't want to start over from scratch. So we're going to use the copy tree functionality, which is similar to the pack and go functionality, yeah. right? So that we can pack up everything that's related to this assembly. We can actually go in in the, in the copy tree functionality inside of PDM standard and say we want to reuse this file, and this one is actually going to be a new file based off of this, so we're going to be able to do that. There's some BOM integration inside of here as well, which we'll show you that. And you get the integrated previewer for parts, assemblies, and the SMG is a SOLIDWORKS Composer file for instruction manuals and those type of things. And you can also view the DWG. But real quick, let's talk about the, the versioning and revision, because this comes up a lot. And when I was first starting here, you know, backgrounds, industrial design, I could barely spell FEA. And I'm like, version, revision, what's the difference in this? So a version is this. I start working on a file. I have to go to a meeting at 9 o'clock, but I want to get started. And I want to have my other work group mates, my other engineers, my other designers in the company have access to that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check that file into the vault. After the meeting, I come out, I start working on it again, I make some more changes, I have to go to lunch. I'm going to check it back into the vault again. End of the day, I'm going to have, I've done some more work on it. So those are the versions of that file. And at any point, I can go back to one of those. Now, a revision is, remember that workflow I showed you earlier? How, okay, so a couple of years go by, right? And we got SOLIDWORKS simulation now. And we found out that, you know, we ran a little FDA on this, and we can actually change the material. We can reduce some of the areas on here. Maybe customers called up and said, hey, Todd, you know, we need to change this a little bit because it's, it's, it's too heavy. We need to make it a little bit softer, whatever, right? Any, it doesn't matter. So if it's been released and it's in the manufacturing state and it's out there and customers are using it, that would be a revision. But it's still going to keep track of those and allow us to go back at any point to one of those previous ones because a customer may still call up and say, hey, that machine you built for me two years later, I need this specific replacement part. Yeah. But all new machines are going to have the new one. So that's the difference between a version and a revision. So, you know, we get this all the time. I don't want to use this. I don't want it. I don't want data management because the overhead is so huge. No, that is not the case. But finding data. You know, we talked about it earlier, how many times, how much time do you spend? Way too much time. Yeah, reusing data. Now, those top two, if we can improve that, is going to get you to the third, which is going to increase your speed. Yeah. Okay? We also have the secure vaulting for it. 
you're going to have access to the right file at the right time. How many people out there have manufactured the wrong part? Now, that doesn't usually cost hundreds of dollars or thousands of dollars. Nine times out of ten, it costs hundreds of thousands of dollars because the wrong part was manufactured or shipped to the customer. It makes you look bad. And it's also going to help with concurrent engineering. Now, concurrent engineering, a lot of people, what, what is that? So, so Cody is stepped in here with me. We both want to work on the same assembly at the same time. Now, we're not going to work on the same parts, but concurrent engineering is going to allow us all to work on the same file at the same time. And we talked about that file corruption earlier. Data management is really going to decrease that. So, system requirements, we get this a lot too. This is a little different than work group. Now, the CAD editor part is going to be the exact same system requirements that were needed that, that are needed for SOLIDWORKS in general. But more importantly, it's going to be the archive server. And people are like, why do I need an archive server? Well, that's going to help you find your data and back up your data. Because if it's on the network drive, it's only going to get backed up whenever. Okay. In the file corruption and everything. So the archive server is going to back up that data. And you're going to also need the database server. And all of these specifications, um, you call them the support, we can help you with that as well as, uh, this is just off the SOLIDWORKS homepage under support system requirements. So all that information is right there. Yeah, I know you slid, went through those slides pretty quick, but there's a PDF I think we have of that yeah. document. So yeah, you're yeah. going to be able to get that and all those system requirements are out there. And th this is the, the matrix between SOLIDWORKS PD and Professional and SOLIDWORKS Standard. So if we were to call up and you were to talk to me and you go, you know, 3 Vision, we have multi-site here. Yeah. As soon as you would say multi-site, I'm going to tell you, you need to go to professional because the SQL Express is just not made to do something like that. Or if you would tell me somebody outside of my design group, like say procurement, would need access to some of the data I have, like be able to come in and see, or marketing would want to get materials or add images to this. This would be a point where PDM Professional would come in, and this would be something more. So the I see. So the real big difference is. You know, do I need PDM standard or do I need PDM professional? Is if your multi-site is the key thing. It, that's right? one of the keys. Yes, it's one of the keys, but it's not the only one. No. But it tends to be the first, uh, uh, the first reason why people would upgrade to PDM professional. But we do have Larry. I know our customer base well. A lot of them are single-site lo locations, and yeah. they are very well qualified for PDM standard, which is again included. Yeah. With There's their no reason for product. any of our customers not to have it. And the great thing is at 3D Vision. We have three ways that you can actually implement this for us. Let's get back to the, the three ways that we can implement. Now, you can do this on your own, which I'm not going to Are you recommend. talking about installing this? You can install this on your own, which I do not recommend. We also have two different services. We can, One service that we provide is we can do this remotely. So we can log in okay. your computer remotely. You know, like doing like we are going to go to me, but we have other software for that. We log into your system, and we install it remotely. The other one is we have physically come on site. We install it. If you have any documents or data that you need to import into that, we can do that for you as well. Okay, and that's we, data migration. Yeah, yeah, totally different, a little bit more, but it's still it's a service that we provide. And trust me, it's going to help you in the long run. People are going to know what they're doing, and it's going to get done. It's going to get done right. And we also give you a little bit of, hey, here's the interface and what it is, not meant to replace training. Yeah. Okay? You know, i, I got to tell a little story. I met a customer about two weeks ago that did install their uh, PDM uh, standard product by themselves. And um, they said they wish they would have had us do it because it would have saved them about two days' worth of work. You know, it's one of those things that, you know, when we do installs uh, for SOLIDWORKS on support, the other day it was like 60 man hours. It was myself for two hours, the IT guy for two hours, which means that the engineer couldn't do it for two hours. And that right there alone would have paid for it us to come out and do that install for something like that, you know? Yep. Well, you know what? We've been showing a lot of slides. Let's show them what the product looks like. Okay, so let's go take a look at the interface now inside of Windows Explorer. We notice we're right inside of Windows Explorer. We have that same file structure that we're used to. Let's go look in projects and go pick a specific project and then let's look at those CAD files that we talked about being able to store inside of there. We pick our grill. We see a preview. That preview is eDrawings. It's that tool that we are all used to seeing and viewing from inside, uh, for viewing SOLIDWORKS files. 
There's the data card with all of that metadata that we talked about previously on. There's versions. We also get the bill of materials. Now, what's great about this bill of materials is you can see different versions of the bill of material if you need to. You can also save this out to a, an XCV, a CSV file if you need it. You can open that in Excel. Some of the other things you can do are you can do, go to the Contains tab, and the Contains tab is going to tell you what is contained, the quantities, what versions are being it, and where it's located. Let's go take a look at a subassembly and find out where that subassembly is actually used. We can also find out if there's different configurations of that subassembly used. All we need to do is double click that file in order to open it inside of SOLIDWORKS. So we don't need to check out these files. We're just going to view them because what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the interface inside of SOLIDWORKS. Once it's open, over in the task pane, we get the full integration of PDM standard. We can also right click over in the feature manager tree. We can get latest. We can check it out. We can check it in. If we check something out we didn't need to, we can undo that. Or if you like pull down menus, you could actually pull down that menu and you could get to the, those exact same options as well. Let's go ahead. Let's go back to that Windows Explorer preview because what if we have other different file types? We talked about things like, say, PowerPoint and we want to check in our PowerPoint. We want to save this. Notice, we just do a file save as. This is the exact same view. So any Windows program, you're going to be able to save this file into the vault. Now, certain files are going to have different types of data cards, and this PowerPoint file also has its own data card. So all that information could be stored inside of that project. How do you get files into the vault is another one that we get a lot. Well, just like you would any other Windows program is we're going to drag and drop. I have a PDF file on my desktop. I'm just going to drag and drop that in. A data card for those type of documents as well. The other thing we can do is we can just open up another Windows Explorer window and we can drag and drop. So let's say we have an entire folder that we want to put into our vault. Very easily, we just drag and drop that file in. All these files are being checked in. All of those relationships of all of our SOLIDWORKS parts, assemblies, or drawings are being maintained. Now, we're not going to check in this file, but all those files are in there. We could. All we would need to do is right-click on that folder, and we could check in that entire folder. Let's go take a look at what's in there. There's Word documents in there that are checked that are in the vault. They're not in the vault yet, but they're there. Uh, to view a file, we click it. It's all there. So this is the basic overall interface of PDM standard.